We're going to do something a little bit different this morning. How many of you knows what our mission statement is? All right, we're going to repeat our mission sta statement. Our mission is to be the friendliest church in town with no clicks and no walls. So for the next three minutes, we've already shaken hands with everybody we know, right? So now for the next two to three minutes, we're going to shake hands. Brother Brent's going to place a little something. We're going to shake hands with our visitors. If you're a visitor, we want you to know how happy we are to have you here at Collierville First Pentecostal Church. So can we do that for the next couple of minutes? Step out in the aisle. If you don't, if you don't know someone, step across the aisle and introduce yourself to them. Tell them how happy you are to have them here in the house of God. How much we're thankful for their visit today.
Hallelujah. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Such a beautiful crowd. Such a great presence of God. Everybody looks nice. Everybody's well-dressed, got their Sunday best on, as we like to say. But you know what? I didn't come here to see you. I just want to be honest with you right now. I enjoy seeing each and every one of you. But I didn't come here just to talk to you. I come here to worship an almighty God. I don't care who sees me worshiping him today. I'm going to worship him with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my might. And I pray right now that you would join in with each and every one of us and worship him with all your heart, your soul, your might. Forget about who's around you. Forget about what's going to go on tomorrow. Forget about what's going to go on later on this afternoon. Forget about what happened in your past. And begin to focus on an almighty, all-powerful, worthy, and risen Savior. Can we do that for just a moment right now with everything you've got within you? However you want to do it, just begin to worship Him. God, we're here to worship you. God, we're here to give you glory. God, we haven't gathered in this house just to talk to one another, but God, we've come here to commune with you. God, we've come here to communicate with you. We've come here to give you glory. We've come here to give you honor. And I don't care what everybody else is going to do this morning. God, I'm going to worship you. God, I'm going to give you glory. I'm going to give you honor. I'm going to give you praise because you are worthy. You are holy and you are mighty. Blessed be your name, Jesus. watching, nobody's watching me, dance for you, my Lord, I'm gonna sing for you, like nobody's listening, nobody's listening, and sing for you, my Lord. Nobody's watching, nobody's watching me dance for you, my Lord. I'm gonna sing, gonna sing for you like nobody, like nobody's listening, nobody's, nobody's listening, listening but you, Lord.
gonna worship you like nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. Worship you, my Lord. I'm gonna worship you like nothing else matters. Like nothing else matters. Nothing, nothing else, else matters, matters right now.
gonna silence me Shout it out if you believe I'm not afraid, I'm not ashamed Nothing's gonna hinder me Nothing's gonna silence me Shout it out if you believe I'm not afraid, I'm not ashamed Nothing's gonna hinder me Nothing's gonna silence me Shout it out if you Shout it out I'm not Shout it out and yeah, 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 yeah.
Come on, you don't need somebody to be singing right now. Out of your own mouth. Out of your own mouth, praise the Lord. Come on, declare some things. Praise Him for some things right now. Hallelujah. Come on, that's it. Come on, that's it. Just praise a little bit while longer. Hallelujah.
these words Yes, I have royal blood It's flowing through my veins I'm a child of the King I've been buried in His name There is no devil That can come against me Cause I've been blessed I've been born I have been set free I've been in the joy of the Lord Come on, rest on me I've been Why don't you step out into the aisle Give the Lord your best praise today. praise just for about another five minutes what is crazy praise brother it's when you get out of yourself you don't care who's watching you don't care who's looking and you just want to give God some praise you want to lift him up and say God you've been good to me somebody hear me somebody needs a dance in your brain right now somebody needs a dance in your, your bad day right now the Holy Ghost is fixing to give you a miracle oh hallelujah come on step out of your house for the next two moments and give God some praise Joy. Oh, yeah. 
Somebody needs to speak this into their life right now. Say, I have been loose. 
feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost. It's all over Come on, let's lift our hands one more time. Let's give him some praise. Lord, Lord, we're so undeserving of what we've felt already today. Oh, but God, you're good to us. Thank you, Lord, for this great anointing we feel in this house. Lord, you're such a good God today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There's nothing wrong with praising God. I'm going to tell you, I learned a long time ago, I can praise my way through anything. Anything. It doesn't matter if it's a financial problem. I can praise my way through it. If it's a sickness, I can praise my way through it. I've been so sick before and I come to church, I didn't feel good at all. But by the time I got through worship, it's like it just lifted out of my body. Amen. And it will do that. I promise you. I felt in the Holy Ghost a moment ago is to tell somebody, and I want to tell you why I've got you quiet now. It's time to quit straddling the fence. And you know who you are. The Holy Ghost wants me to tell you it's time to stop straddling the fence. It's time to get on God's side. Let the enemy have his day all he wants. But it's time to get on God's side 100%. Amen. How many is ready to do that in this place today? Together? I want to be on a God's side 100% today. In Jesus' name. It's so good to be back in the house, our house today. Amen. I uh, preached out last Sunday for a Brother Andrew Flowers, a year anniversary service. And God's doing a great work with him and through him there. 
but it's nothing like home, praise God. Amen. When you're at home, you just feel good. And it's so good to have a great body of people here in this place today. Love to worship God with you guys. Amen. How many has a chance to walk through the new sanctuary yet? It's, it's coming along. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. Isn't that awesome? I'd like to say thank you for the, the about 25 or so that was able to show up yesterday. I know others would love to came, but you had things to take care of. But don't worry, we will have another work day. Praise God. So, But I want to thank you guys that have come. And I have prayed for God to give you an extra blessing this week. And I'm talking about promotions, job raises. When you work on God's house, God sends those blessings out. And I thank you so much. Uh, for showing up yesterday, we've done a lot of, got a lot of stuff done, and we still got a lot to do. But thank you, thank you, thank you, Amen. And I got a quick announcement. Also, we're trying to make this parking lot get us through until we get done. And I want to thank y'all first of all for all the squeezing in and parking close to each other. And so I don't want you to hit nobody's car, but the closer you can get, the better it'll be. Uh, so we can get as many cars out there as we can. And we're going to try to start leaving one lane open for in the portage. You can drop somebody off so they can come through the church and not have to walk up the hill in the dirt. Uh, so if you'll leave just one lane closest to the doors in the, in, under the drive through that would be awesome. So people can get in and drop some off, and it's easier sometimes for an elder to come this way than he is up this hill, if y'all understand what I mean. So help me out on that, and help Brother Art on that, and Brother Art can be a nice guy and just tell you to move a lot along, and, and we'll get it all done together. Amen? Praise the Lord. But we're going to get there. Everybody say Amen. amen. If you've got a four-wheel drive truck and want to park out in the dirt, that might help. Amen. If you've got a big truck or something you don't think will get stuck, move on out there. We just need all your help we can get. We're trying not to have to shuttle from the mall, but if we have to, we'll start shuttling to the mall again. Amen. But thank you for your help. Judges chapter 3, if you got your Bibles, Judges chapter 3 today. Judges chapter 3, praise the Lord. And I'm going to read the last verse of that chapter today. Amen. And I'm going to make sure you listen to me today. I got my rod with me. Praise the Lord. Amen. You will see in a moment why I have the rod. Judges chapter 3, 31 says, And after him was Shemgar the son of Anath, which slew the Philistines, 600 men with an ox goad, and he also delivered Israel. Lay your Bibles down behind you and help me pray one more time. Lord, I love you. I thank you for the worship. I thank you for the music. God, I thank you for your presence that's floating this place. But God, we need the word today, Lord. I pray your word to go forth, God. Not my word, but your word, God, will speak to this congregation today. Anoint every heart, God, every ear, God. Let them con be conditioned for the word that's coming forth today. We need your help today, Lord, in this place. And everybody said amen. amen. God bless you. Amen. You can be seated. Praise the Lord. It was Shamgar. Amen. What a, what a name. He didn't get a lot of attention here. He got one verse in honor of him. Shamgar was... Uh, a man that lived over 3,000 years ago. That's a mighty long time ago, but a story that was well put. And I, I, I'm just going to say this. Uh, history kind of goes along with what I'm about to say. Some, some scholars don't agree with it, but I'm going to go with it because I think it sounds like a, 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 a legitimate thing, I guess you can say. Uh, Shemgar was undoubtedly a farmer. Has anybody ever met a farmer? Uh, they have their overalls on and... Uh, they have their big straw hats on. And they, they're these guys that you don't really see much and think much about because, you know, who wants to be a farmer? It's probably the low-grade paying guy. Uh, but, you know, a lot of times we don't understand without a farmer, you and I probably wouldn't have our beans and corns and uh, breads that we eat because of the wheat they grow. And some of you probably wouldn't even have your cotton clothes on today. Farmer is a very important person, but Shamgar lived this many years ago and. I say he was a farmer because he carried an ox goat. Anybody know what an ox goat is? Well, good. I didn't know either until I looked it up. This is not an ox goat, by the way. This is a cane you get when you get old. You can walk with it. That's what this is. But what an ox goat is, they used to have something about this size, but on the end of it, it was a very sharp point that when the ox got lazy and stubborn and didn't want to move, they'd take that thing and they'd stab that ox and he would take off because pain hurts and made him move. And that's what the farmers use to make the stubborn ox move along. And no, I'm not going to use on nobody today, okay? So, 
But an ox goad was this wooden pole and it had a sharp edge on it and it would poke that dude and make him move on. And Shemgar was a farmer that took an ox goad, if you would, and he took it and he went out and he did this. 600 Philistines did he slew. And the Bible says he slew 600 of them. Shemgar was, was uh, no doubt saw his family and friends under attack and, and something come over him. Have you ever had an extraordinary strength come over you and you was like, oh, you just feel like you can do something and you feel like you just make it happen. That's where he was. Something come over him. And he used that thing and made his uh, 600 Philistines enemies dead in a matter, within a matter of time. Now, truthfully, we have to be honest with each other. The odds was against him. He didn't really have a lot of uh, hope going for him. I mean, if to me, if 600 men was after me, I would run. I mean, as fast as I could the other direction. But he had odds against him. But he didn't say, I'm going to wait until my army comes in. I'm going to wait until I call my brothers in. And then we'll go fight. He didn't wait. He didn't wait until the extra money come in or, or the extra help came in. He says, you know what? I can do this now. And it came over him and he took it. And today I want to preach just for a few moments on this title. Use what you got. Use what you got. Amen. We can't wait till everything is just right before we work with God. So many times we're waiting on the plate to be set and to was ready and everybody you know we we are all guilty of that can I hear amen I mean how many thought that you was gonna have to come here and set up chairs today and clean the church up before you had church no you came in because you knew at 1030 the church was gonna be kind of cool the church was gonna be ready to have church the music's gonna be laid out preachers got his sermon ready all I have to do is just go and sit down but I want to tell you, this service would be a whole much different service if you would have came in today and just used what you got. I don't have a whole lot, Brother Hunt, but use what you got. I had a lady tell me years and years ago, she says, when I retire, I'm going to be the greatest worker you've ever seen for God. This person finally retired and still is not working for God. Because I am determined in my mind, if you don't work before you retire, you won't work after you retire. Y'all wanna go a little deeper with that? If you don't pay tithes when you make a little bit of money, you won't pay tithes when you make a lot of bit of money. Come on. If you'll start with what you got, and God will start multiplying and bring in more into your house. I'm going to tell you, you cannot give God, but I guarantee you today, if you'll use what you got, uh, hallelujah, God will turn around and he'll build on top of that. He'll build on top of that. He'll, come on, somebody needs to hear me today. <laughs> hallelujah. Now what I'm preaching today is, is use what you got. And so many times we remember uh, things in our life about how I, it didn't do me any good back then. And now we take it and we lay it over here on the side and say, you know what, I'm just going to lay it right there and it's going to be, at least I got that much and I'm careful with it and if I be careful, it'll last me, let's see, well, until I get 95 and it ain't going to matter no way. You know, after 95, I'm going to put it all right here in this box and I'm not going to use any of it. I'm just going to let it sit for storage and I'm going to take care of it. And we get to that idea and we lay it aside. But I want to tell you something today. I heard this a long time ago. We got to remember things. Out there in the new church, those wood doors that we have in that church are real heavy doors. It's so heavy. Uh, can I get an amen from Will and, and was it, who else was toting it? And Johnny, are those heavy doors out there? These two guys told it a piece of a door yesterday and, we, and I was in the middle and it was hard and heavy. But remember this, heavy doors and big doors hang on small hinges. We always looking for something big to happen in my life. When all of this gets together and I get all of this in a row and I take care of this. I, I had a guy one time in my life, very dear, close guy to me. He says this, he says, when I quit smoking, then I'm going to be a great man of God. I'm going to go forth. I'm going to do this. This is the only thing to help me back. Guess what? A few years later, he quit smoking, but nothing else changed. I want to tell you, don't quit. Don't wait until all the sin is gone before God can use you. 
Because if you start, oh, this is for somebody right now. If you'll go ahead and start doing things that you can do. Put everything you can into it. Come on. You, oh, here, hallelujah. You'll begin to watch God deliver you from things that, that you've been trying to get delivered from. Taking things away from your life because you're beginning to work it for God. Somebody needs to hear me today. It's time to put one step in front of the other and say, my God is a deliverer. Yeah. Hallelujah. He can and he will. Zechariah 5, 4 and 10 tells us, for who hath despised the day of small things? Church, we can't forget about small things. So many times our big heads get us in trouble. Anybody ever had a big head? You ever seen somebody with a big head and just want to go pop and watch them fly away like a balloon? Sometimes our big heads will get us in trouble. But you can't forget what you're built on today. Hey, my friend, that first ounce of concrete that was poured is what's holding you up. That next ounce of concrete is what made you stronger. That next yard of concrete, what made you even bigger? But friend, when you take out the bottom, you will fall in. We cannot forget the small things. We got to remember, I am where I am because God brought me off of the backside of nowhere and he put my feet into the right place to stand. Somebody needs to hear me today. God's got good interests for you. Ah. Brother Johnson, I don't have a whole lot to offer, but I'm gonna give you everything I got. I'm not the greatest preacher in the world, but I'm gonna give you everything I got. Hey, I may not be the greatest preacher, but they're not gonna do it without me because I'm gonna be right in amongst them and I'm gonna let them know I don't have a whole lot to offer, but everything I got, I'm gonna give it to him. I'm gonna say, hey God, you are on my side. You are fighting for me. I gotta fight with everything I got. Use what you got. If a little is all you got, use it 100%. Come on, if a little is all you got, use it. I won't take the time to read it, but Matthew chapter 25, you'll find a parable that was written about a man who had some talents. He began to pass these talents out. He gave one man five talents. He gave another man two talents. And he gave another man one talent. The story goes long after a long time, a period of time, the man came back to check on these folks that he gave a talent to. And he began to look at it and say, okay, the man with five talents, uh, let me see what you got. Guess what the man with five talents done? The man with five talents, he went and he made 10 talents. Oh, that's pretty good. As a matter of fact, it was so good that the man looked at him and says, well done. And told him, he says, thou have done very well. I'm gonna double what you got. You've been faithful, servant. Now I'm gonna even bless you more. So he looks down the line and he comes to the guy who gave two talents to him. He says, oh, you did a great job. You doubled your talents. Now you have four talents. Look, you are doing a great job. So he looks back at the young man. He said, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Now this is also, uh, the Bible says, this is such as the kingdom of heaven is. This is what was going on in his time. He says, this is the way heaven is gonna be. When we get to heaven, we're, he's gonna look at us and he's gonna say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. He looked at the one with five, he done 10 talents. Uh, he done good. I'm gonna tell you something today. Some of you are sitting down on your talents uh, and you're gonna lose that talent, my friend. You're waiting on a better and bigger day to use it. You better use what you got now. Because you're gonna lose it. You say, can you prove it? Yes, I can. I'm glad you asked. Because the next guy he gave one talent to, he gave him the talent. He said, here you go. This is for you. You know what he did? He ran and hid it to just so how I gotta make sure this talent's gonna be good. So I'm gonna hide that talent. I don't want nobody to get rid of it. And that's gonna be for a later date because when the servant comes back, that's gonna be just perfect. I'm gonna be able to go back out and dig it out. And guess what? The servant came back and looked at the guy with one. He said, hey, how are you doing with your one, your one talent. I didn't give you a whole lot, to, but what are you doing with that one talent you got? He said, oh, he said, I'm proud. He said, hey, I didn't, I don't, I'm not using that talent. As a matter of fact, I put that talent up. I went over and hid it, and now it's secure. It's safe. As a matter of fact, come here, let me show you. Look at this. Look at this. It's even. Look at how many it is. It's still good shape. Hey, I had a talent. You gave it to me, but I kept it safe. And you know what? The Bible says, and that, that man, he looked at him and says unto him, he says, you, he rebuked him and told him, get behind him he says I'm not going to take it you wicked man 
In other words, it's not what I'm, it's not acceptable. Can I tell you today, if God's gave you a talent, you're not using it, it's not acceptable to God. Woo, that's tight, but that's right. One verse I want to read out of that is, is verse 29. He says, for unto every one that hath shall be given. If you have it, I'm going to give it to you. In other words, if you're using it, I'm going to give you more. If you're not using it, I need to take it away. And this is what the Lord did. The, the servant did. He took it away. And he says, I'm going to give it to the one who is multiplying my, my talent. And he did. He took it away. So this man went home empty-handed. But the man who had 10 talents went away with 11 talents. Uh, he got blessed. I'm going to tell somebody something today. You better use what you got. Uh, and you better put it to work 100% where you are. <laughs> uh, let me ask you a question we have 15 to 20 ministers here today we better have 15 to 20 ministers here today if they're at home they're, they, they don't need to be preaching today praise God they ought to be faithful to the house of God but you know what if you were the pastor would you be acting different here if you was in my shoes would you be acting different would you be doing more that, if you would, that means it's in you. That means you have it. What it means to me is I need to start using and doing what God has given me. Because if I use it here, God's going to bless it over there and I'm going to be able to multiply and I'm not going to have a five, but I'm going to have 10. If I use those 10, I'm not going to have 10, but I'm going to have 20. What I'm trying to tell you, God is a multiplier. Come on. He'll multiply you if you'll let him use you. Let me finish this. Watch it. Watch this. And he shall have an abundance, he says. From, but from him that hath not shall be taken away even which he hath. In other words, if you ain't doing anything with it, I'm going to put it in somebody's lap that will. Come on. You think you can sing? You probably can't, but you think you can I used to think I could until I went back and heard myself on a CD. Now I just sing to myself, Jesus. <laughs> Come on, but if you've got a talent of singing and you're not using it, guess what God's about to do? He's about to rip out your throat and give it to somebody else. Oh, you better hear your pastor. That's not popular preaching, but you better get with the worship pastor. You better receive the Holy Ghost, start living right, paying your tithes, being faithful, dressing right, acting right, looking right, and get yourself in the choir if you are living right. You better hear though, pastor. If you don't, you're about to lose what God has given you. And you're gonna lose it. And when you lose it, you're gonna find yourself over on the backside of nowhere, looking for somewhere to hide, maybe a cave somewhere, and then you're gonna start saying, nobody loves me, nobody cares about me, nobody talks to me, everybody hurts my feelings, nobody wants me to sing no more, nobody, that's a lie. The choir's open enrollment, we want everybody to sing. Come on. There's more opportunities around this place to sing than it's ever been in your life. Brother Brent's opening it up. He's, he's just, he's, we got some guidelines we go by. But I want to tell you, use what you got today. This verse that I just read, verse 29, it's not no joke. It's not a joke. How, how many times have I seen people that did not use what they have? How many times have you, you you've seen, man, he's really got a lot of talent just to be sitting on the pew. Well, she's really a talented person just to be sitting there. How many times have people have you seen and they could they could have if they would have. They had a chance after chance, but they missed that open window that we have. I'm gonna tell you, we all have a season. And there's a reason that we're here today. And there's a season that God has given each and every one of us. Some of us is in an elder season. Some of us in a midlife. And some of us in a youth season. But I'm gonna tell you, wherever you are, God still has something for you to do. Come on, we need somebody that's 80 years old to stand and say, you know what? I once was young, but now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the seed begging bread. I want to tell you, because I am going to use everything that I have today. Huh. This is for somebody right here who needs to write real big in front of your Bible. You need to write this real big on that white blank page in front of your Bible. Noah did not wait for his boat to come in. He built his own. He didn't 
wait around for the big ark to flow right through. God can supply. I know he'll bring me an ark. I know he'll bless me. And God, if you want me to save this world, bring me an ark. But he went and got hammers and nails and, and went and got the Pacific kind of wood. He went to the jungle in the woods and he began to cut trees down. He spent hours of labor. He built an ark. I want to tell you, quit waiting on your boat. Get you a stinking hammer out. Get you a tube belt on and go to work and build your boat and know that God's got something for you to do. Use what you got today. Woo, use what you got. Hallelujah. Shamgar's resources were limited. All he has was the ox gold. Sometimes all we have is prayer and the word. Sometimes we can look out and we can say, just nobody understands where I'm at. You don't know how many times those words have come out of my mouth to myself if people would just understand what I'm talking about. I can't preach it, but only a hundred different ways, but it seems like they still can't understand where I'm at sometimes. And it feels like they don't understand. You know what I preach today? I preach by faith. I live by faith. I built the church that we're building out here by faith. I don't know how it's gonna happen. I don't know what's gonna come to pass, uh, but I do know this. Uh, my God has it all in his hands. Uh, he's in control. He, oh, hallelujah. Somebody needs to hear me. I do everything I do by faith. If you believe that, clap your hands to the Lord. God has put something in your hands today. I don't know what God's got in your hands. But I promise you, you're not empty-handed. God's put something in your hands. We all have different talents in this place. Some of you are very good with a hammer, tape measure, skill saws. Some of you even put glasses together. Some of you can, some of you sell drugs. Hallelujah. So some of you do computer work. We all have talents. We have, we have abilities inside of us that's just unreal. I mean, I, I've seen sticks of wood that, Brother Norris, you have brought back pictures and just pieces of wood to make it man, like just, just shiny, look like glass. And he's good, that's his talent. And some of you are good at teaching, some of you are good at preaching. Some, we all have something that God's given us. Uh, regardless of what it is, something's in your hands. But there's only one person that can determine what is in my hands. What can I do for the kingdom of God? Brother Hunt, I can't do nothing, that's a lie. You can pick up trash. That's the lowest of low, Brother Hunt. I promise you, garbage, trash people get promoted every day. Somebody looked at me the other day. I'm out here with my work clothes on, running around, doing this, doing that. I said, uh, are you the superintendent? I said, yes, I'm also the janitor. I'm the toilet scrubber. I'm the grass cutter, whatever I got to be. It doesn't matter to me. I, I, I told him this. I said, sometimes I even preach. Why? Because I can do it. God's gave it to me. Now, I can go sit it on a shelf somewhere and say, I don't have that time. For, no, that would be wrong of me to wait on the big day to come in when I can work to that big day. I can get this ark built, hallelujah. God asked Moses, he said, son, what you got in your hands? All I got is a stick. He told us to throw it down. When he threw it down, he ate up all of Pharaoh's little snakes and it began to chew them up and he gave it back up. He asked him again one day, some more, it's in your hands. He says, just a stick. He said, you think you're surrounded by enemies behind you in the Red Sea in front of you? He said, hold that stick over the Red Sea. And when he did, the story says the Red Sea split open. Oh, he didn't have a whole lot. Even he had a stuttering problem. He couldn't talk too good. Matter of fact, he had Aaron to do a lot of speeches for him. But you know what? He had a stick in his hand. He had something that was anointed by God. I come to tell somebody something today. You've got something in your hands. I don't know what it is, but use what you got today. Oh, hallelujah. Samson even took a jawbone of a donkey. Somebody said, why do you use a jawbone of a donkey? Maybe that's all was laying around. He couldn't find nothing else to whip a thousand men. And the Bible said he slew a thousand men. Oh, but he was Samson, brother, honey. He had muscles on top of muscles. I don't think he did. They draw pictures of it, show him all buffed and all that stuff. I just think he had something inside of him. Being a Nazareth, he couldn't cut his hair of his life. He had to leave it long. When he cut his hair, he lost his strength. That's why I don't think it was a muscle thing. But I want to tell you what it was. It was a God thing. 
when God gets inside of you, it doesn't matter your ability or your, your looks. And some people say you're too short, you're too this, you can't speak good. It doesn't matter who you are. It don't matter your race. It don't matter if you're black, white, Hispanic. Why? It doesn't matter what you are. All it is is this. God says if I can find one man, if I can find one woman, I need to give a talent to today. But not only do I want to give it to them, but I want them to begin to multiply what I've given them. Shamgar used what he had in his hands because it's all he had and it became a lethal weapon. Can I tell you that anyone else would have looked at that and said, you know what, that's a joke. He's just a little country boy. Can I tell you, come out of your little high city self and know that we're all really country girls and boys. There's not nobody here as a city folk today. If I said slopping the pigs, everybody here know what I'm talking about. If I say garden in your backyard, some of you are saying, yeah, I wish I had one. Come on, we, we're all country folks just living in the city side of the life. We're all raised on cornbread, buttermilk, and come on, somebody. White beans and cornbread and pork chops and fried chicken. You fry, oh, hallelujah. I got to hurry up right now and finish this. Fried green tomatoes. Oh, Hallelujah. Some of you might even say, throw a little chitlins on the side. Y'all can have all of them you want. But one thing about it is, I believe this little country boy, somebody probably looked at him, he's nobody. Look at him, he's just a little country boy, don't know anything. He don't know whether he's coming or going, but you know what? It didn't stop him. He took that ox goat and he says, you know what? Y'all done messed with my family long enough. You done been in my, oh hallelujah, my friends. I'm gonna tell you, I'm coming after you 100%. I'm not stopping. And he slew them Philistines. God's interested in you today, can I tell you? God's interested in your enthusiasm today. Come on, one man was so excited he heard Jesus was coming by, he began to hail, yell, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He didn't hear him, so he got much louder and said, Jesus. And he sent for him and said, tell him to come. And God healed blind Bartimaeus' his eyes that day. Jesus' first miracle was we all know he turned water into wine. Why did he do that? Because there wasn't nothing else there but water. If it was Coke, he would have done it. But you know what? He turned what he had, my friend. Plus, he saw a need that was present. Can I tell you, God sees a need that's present today. That's when Jesus shows up. If there wasn't any needs, he wouldn't have to show up, would he, Brother Patton? But he saw it today. David only had five smooth stones to take Goliath down with. Personally, we all know he didn't need but one. Many, many stories about what the other four were for. Somebody says that maybe the five stones represent J-E-S-U-S. -S. Some said maybe it was if he missed once, he'll have four more tries. But I'm going to stick with this one today for this sermon's thought. I believe he grabbed five because he knew all he needed was one. I believe he grabbed five just in case uh, Goliath's other four brothers wanted some. Just in case they stuck their head out there, he hit them right there too. You see, I'm going to tell you, he didn't come empty-handed, but all it took was one. And when he had victory, can I tell you, when you take your one talent, you may have more than one. You may have five. You may have six. You may be a blessed person. But I want to tell you, if you'll take that one talent, my friend, God will take it and he will use it. And he will show victory in your life. And you can show that head to the enemy and say, this too will happen to you if you don't straighten up. God's interested in your enthusiasm if you'll let him be asked. Bless you. I highlighted this and made it real big in my notes today because I want you to write this down as well. The miracle is not what you don't have. The miracle is what's in you and what you got. The miracle is not what you don't have. The miracle is in what you got. If you'll let your miracle start working, it's in you already. If you'll just let it out today. And in closing, if the music get ready to come today... We should use what we got. I understand we should, but we also need to do what we can. How many's ever wanted to really bad, badly do something, but your body wouldn't let you do it? Can I hear amen from people maybe my age or older? You, and sometimes your brain will tell you you can do it, then when, after you do it, you're like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I really got this for a reason today. Y'all just don't know. We're feeling what we've done yesterday a little bit in here. Praise God. But sometimes all God really wants is you to do what you can. He's given you that that you've got. Do what you can 
Number one, I know what we can do. Number one, everybody in this room, this is something that we all can do. Are you ready? You're looking for what can I do, Brother Hunt? You can pray. There's not a person in here that cannot pray. If you tell me you don't know how to pray, I'm just going to say you don't want to. You know what prayer is? Just talking to God. Just like you'd go tell mom and daddy, mom and daddy, I really like to have a new bicycle. We know with this, this color, this stuff. Won't you go to God and say, God, you are my great God. God, I ask you to touch my needs, uh, touch my life. Pray. Anybody can pray. The Bible says in John 14, 13, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. Ask in the name of Jesus. I need to ask somebody before I go any further. Have you prayed about it? One of my favorite answers to, for somebody's question sometimes is this. Let me go pray about it. Before I give you an answer, let me go pray about it. Before a decision is made, do you pray about it? Before you buy that new car, did you pray about it or did you have to? That's just what I want. That's what I'm going to get now. Maybe God didn't want you to have that car. Did you pray about it before you bought that house, Brother Brent? God bless you. Congratulations, by the way. I'm excited for you. And I know you did. This is praying. I'm going to tell you, our worship pastor prays. If he wasn't a prayer worship, worship pastor, I wouldn't have him. He prays. That's what it takes. Hear me. Prayers changes things. Pray about it. Did you pray about it? So anybody can pray, but this is something we all got to do right here. To make it with God, you got to stay focused. It's the secret to energy. Did y'all know that? If you're not focused, you use all of your energy and you ain't got nothing done. But if you stay focused, it's like an energy thing. If you focus on getting something done, do you know how good it makes you feel to get one project done? It's energy pops in. Woo, man, I think I'm going to go get this. I'm going to focus right here. I'm going to get that done. Woo, there's another energy spurt. Then I get over here. I got that completed. It's done. Then I get another energy spurt. But see, sometimes we're all drained and down and out because we ain't focused. We got our mind running 100 mile an hour right now. We got to get to the altar. We got to go to Captain D's and get some lunch. We got to go over here. We, our minds ever, but get focused. Apostle Paul said it like this in Philippians 3, 13. I just want to read that. It's such a good verse here. Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended. But watch what he said. But this one thing. Everybody hold your finger up and say one thing. One thing I do is forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. He says, one thing I do, I don't have 50 things I'm dabbling in. You ever visit somebody's house and they got all these projects sitting around? What is all this? Well, I'm going to finish it uh, one day. I'm going to get over here one day. They can't stay focused because everything's just moving around in their mind. Then they want to blame it on they need some pills to make their mind calm down. No, you don't. You just need to get focused. Refocus in and get something done. But he said this one thing, he says, I need to stay focused. What did God say? Don't look to the right. Don't look to the left. But look unto me. Come on. If we'll stay focused. Watch this in Joshua chapter 1. I'm really going to close here in just a second. Watch this with me real quick. This book of Joshua 1, 8 and 9. This book of the law should not depart out of my mouth. We've got to have it in our mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Not just on Sunday morning, not just on Wednesday night, but day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Watch this, verse 9. I have not I commanded thee. This is a command right here. Are you ready? We're supposed to do this. We're commanded to be strong. And be of, of good courage. Be not afraid. If you're using what you got, you don't have to be afraid. If you're teaching, if you know you're a teacher and you know it's inside of you, you should go to Sister Lisa and Brother Stephen Underwood and say, put me where, you're, where I need it. Not where I want to be. Where I need it. Come on, you can't come in here and start choosing and telling God, God, you know I'm a scholar and, and I need to be up there taking Brother Hunt's spot. No, you're not getting my spot. I'm going to fight for this spot. Come on. 
Where am I needed? Because if you do what you're needed for, God's going to elevate you. He's going to put you in another position. Come on, we need to understand God's got something. He said, be strong, good courage, be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Whether it's in the toddler's class, whether it's up here in the choir, whether it's over here in the drum cage, whether it's on the keys, giving Brother Brent a five minute break so he can pray for his wife. Wherever I am needed, God, put me into that position. Oh, hallelujah. All I can see is blessed people. Because we got to remember this. Our input determines our output. If we have put it in, we're going to have some great output. Every one of us is given 24 golden boxes a day. Every one of us. Every day. And we all get the same chances in those 24 golden boxes. To put inside of those golden boxes what we have. We all have the same chance. I could put what God's given me. Or I can take it and just blow it away. How many of those golden boxes do we waste on video games and Facebook and TV and movie theaters? And well, it goes on and on. Bowling alleys. Riding motorcycles. I can preach on that one. I don't have a motorcycle no more. Brother Vince? <laughs> so, but how many golden boxes do we use for God? How many hours of prayer do I put in them? The Bible says pray without ceasing. I'm not saying you're going to pray the whole hour and whole 24 hours, but wouldn't it be God, wouldn't it be great be God too, but wouldn't it just be great if every hour, just for a minute, we just stopped and said, God, here I am again, oh sinful, wretched man that I am. God, would you touch me, Lord? I come today to do this in closing, and I want to encourage somebody to pick up yourself, pick up the, the, the loose ends. Come on, quit Quit trying to run here and there and thither and trying to find what's going to please you and make you happy. Come on, you're not going to be happy until you, until you get out of this world. That kind of happiness is all we're going to find. What you need to do is stay focused on one thing and run with it 100% wide open. I'm going to get off in the flesh just for a second. I, I watch, I'm at the age now, I watch elders. Brother Turner's my hero. I like to watch Brother Turner. Brother Turner has retired. Is it two or three? Two jobs and plus three or twice? Twice. He's retired twice. But he stuck with where he was at twice until he retired. And is one of them military or just the other one? Yeah. He, he stuck with it until he retired. He's my hero because now he's, he's, he's blessed. He's taken care of. But you see, he had to stay focused. It cost, can I tell you this? It costs you to stay focused. It's going to cost you friendships. It's going to cost you people that's out there having their good days. They're going to be out there skiing and having their fun time. You're going to have to be working, focused and thinking. All through the Bible, and I'm, I'm, I'm done here today, almost. But all through the Bible and in this life, you can see people that have great success. You know why? Because they conquer the temptation of giving up. They conquered that temptation. Everybody has it. We all have a give up in our life sometimes. But you got to conquer that. When you conquer it, you can be success. They tell me this, and I don't know if it's true or not. They tell me bulldogs' noses are slanted backwards so they can continue to hold that bite and breathe at the same time. I don't know if it's true or not. It sounds like it may be. And I just say, God, give us a bulldog spirit today. God, give us that bulldog grip where we can take a bite and hang on and keep on breathing until, our, until what we need to do, God, gets passed. This season might move, but God, whatever it is I'm here for, I got to give it 100% now. I can't wait until my, my art comes in. I got to start hammering my own nails now. If God told you to do it, my friend, I'm going to tell you, He's going to bring you through it. So use what you got today. Would you stand with me today? I'm closing. But I want you to hear your pastor today. It's time to stop looking at everyone else's life and their success. Some of you here today, you probably went home and said, I wish my family was like his or hers. 
wish my life was as close to God as they are. Oh, I wish I had their happy family, husband and wife. Oh, look at that. Ain't that awesome? Everyone's life, quit looking at it, their success, and start using what you got. You can be successful where you are today. And when you do, I promise you, God will double your spiritual life. He'll give you a double portion when you use what you got. It might take a matter of time. It might take seven years and then seven more years. But I promise you, you're going to get what you're after. It don't happen. It may not happen today, but don't quit where you're going and use it what you got. Can I ask you before we open this altar, who's ready to use what you got today? I don't have a whole lot, but I got a little bit. Who would like to use what you got today? I'd like to use what I got. I wonder today if I told you this, this little stick right here was made by a good friend of mine, Caleb Shackerford. He went and cut the stick, I think, out of his yard somewhere. Trees of his 100 acres he lived on or whatever. But he, he carved it out and brought it to pastor. And I've had it in my office ever since. And every time I look at it, I pray for Caleb Shackerford. And I think about him. But this is what he made for me. I guess he thought I was getting old, but he made it for me. But if I told you today, hey, this stick right here, if you had this stick in your hands, if you had this stick, and, I'm, and anything you touch, anything you move over that this stick, it's going to happen. I wonder who would run and get this stick today if I told you that. I wonder who could be the first to come and grab it and just say, you know what, I'm going to try it. can't have it but you can borrow it <laughs> why are you saying it brother huh? because I believe if you'll use what you got it's worth a try I guarantee you I can see Brian holding that over his family already Woo! oh don't be so silly brother Hunt. no 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 I'm going to tell you God's looking for somebody just to take it and put it in your hands today how about another one anybody else want to try it Sister Turner, you were so fast, you can have that one. You can have it. That's your walking stick from here out. But today, I want to ask you what's in your hands? What about your family that's sitting beside you? God's given you guys a talent. Maybe you're by yourself. He's given you something. Would you come today and say, God, i got to start using this? Hey, it, it, it's not me that you got to come and say, Brother Hunt, this is what my God... No, no, I listen. But you're the ones going to have to decide to use it. You're the ones going to have to put it 100% to use. Would you come today and say, God, here I am. God, I'm ready. God, I, I've shortchanged you. I should have been using it already, God. I've held back. But God, until something else opens, I'm going to start using it what i got right now, 100%. Oh, God, I pray for these that's coming to this altar right now. Lord, as we lift our hands together, I believe you're going to touch, Lord, these that are our talents that you have passed out today. And these folks want to see a difference. I pray you anoint them right now, God. Jesus, speak to their hearts today. Help us to move where we need to move and do what we need to do in our lives. Let your spirit, God, go to work. God, I'm not waiting for my ark. I'm going to build it, Lord. Come on, that's it. Worship the Lord in this altar. Yes, Jesus. Come on, let's God to give what you need. Oh, I love you, Jesus.